Chiral Gold interview here again with Dr. Joe Strauss. Excited as always to delve into the brilliant mind of Joe Strauss and get some knowledge and, and learn more about our awesome profession. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. Now we've been How doing, doing? 33 principles here and we're going to get into that today. But first, um, Dr. Joe is going to share a little bit with us about an important concept, which is part of what this is all about, but we're going to get some more thoughts from him on this. And it's the whole idea of slipping and checking. So what do you want to share with us about that? Well, BJ used that term slipping and checking. And, and I think that uh, a lot of chiropractors are concerned about it. And a lot of chiropractors uh, see the need to understand the concept. And so I was just doing a little investigation at, uh, on my own about what that, that term comes from and where and how BJ got it. And of course, we know that people talking about the fact that uh, that chiropractors do do tend to slip, and and we need to check that slipping. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I was thinking back to my uh, my early years with uh, uh, dating my wife. Uh, we started dating, and uh, I guess it was in 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 November, and uh, it got to be the uh, icy time of the year, and I said. Oh, I always, I've always had a problem with, uh, with being on my feet. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I, I used to think that, uh, that I, uh, when I, when I wrestled that I had to, uh, I would be better off starting in the down <laughs> position than not in the up position. And of course, in the days when I wrestled, you got uh, two points for a takedown and then, uh, at, on the first takedown. And then after that, there was only, uh, one point for a takedown. Really? So, so uh, nowadays I notice that the that the wrestlers have the have a tendency to take people down and then let them back up because you get one point for for back, back to a neutral position, right? And uh, and two points for the takedown, and so they can build up points by taking a person down, letting them up, and taking them down again. In yeah. in the days when I wrestled, it was only uh, it mm. was two points for the first takedown. And then one point for every takedown after that. So it was of no value to right. let a person up and take them back down because I never knew it, was that. Just, it was just swapping points. And uh, and so so then uh, everybody nowadays people build up points by just taking a person down, letting them up, and taking them down again if, if they're good on their feet. I was never good on my feet, so it was to my advantage that I that I didn't have to. Uh, to, to deal with deal with that that uh, activity and and cause I was never go to my feet and uh, and when I my wife I used to uh, take her take her arm when we had dated uh, when it was icy out because uh, she thought I was just being being, being a, a, a gallant gentleman uh, <laughs> when really what I was doing was maintaining my own my own balance by holding on to her arm and uh, <laughs> And because I, I really was not that not good on my on my uh, on my feet and and in the ice and I still am not very good on my feet. In fact, I've gotten worse over the years as I've gotten older. Um, but be that as it may, uh, that was my uh, my experience. And and so I, I investigated this idea of slipping. And um, actually, the the original word comes from uh, the the uh, the Greek, uh, fifth century Greek, which was which would be even before the Koine Greek, which was the, the uh, Greek of the, uh, of the of the Bible, uh, it was uh, the, the fifth century Greek, which uh, was uh, really really ancient Greek, and the word meant stumbling, and mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it, it had kind of the worst connotation, where you uh, when when the horse would have a tendency to stumble over a root or or um, a, a part of the the ground or something that you would pull back on the reins and uh, and that would cause the uh, horse to uh, to main, maintain better maintain his balance and so the original word uh, for um, for sl slipping really can be translated as and that's what it came into the uh, the Greek of the the Bible is uh, is to to stumble, and, and it, it was a 
a, a, a equestrian term yeah. uh, that uh, that people had and they used in those days. And so that's where we got it. And um, and I think that uh, in uh, in the New Testament, in the book of Jude, uh, I think it's translated fall uh, in in the book of uh, in in book of Jude. Um, which is probably easy to find because there's only one chapter in the book of, of <laughs> Jude, but uh, I think it's the 27th verse that, that talks about the, that you may not fall, and so that's uh, what we uh, that's where we got the word uh, uh, slipping and, and and checking from, uh, and uh, and and that's and that's what the connotation was in those days was uh, stumbling mm -hmm. and. Uh, and, and it's it's came it's come into uh, the English uh, fall I think in the English translation of of the yeah. New Testament. Uh, so that's where um, that's where B J I think got that term, and uh, he he used the term uh, slipping and uh, and checking our slipping, and uh, as you would pull down back on the reins of the horse to try to stabilize him or to get him to to slow up so so he could get his get his balance again and maintain uh, his uh, upright ability so that's that's the uh, the term that, that we had and that we used uh, in in chiropractic as far as car as far as uh, maintaining our uh, stability and and the idea was uh, that I think that BJ was was talking about or what we are, are trying to talk about is the idea of our of our uh, principles the principles that we have that they are what we can stabilize ourselves by going back to those principles and maintain our our balance or maintain our stability or maintain our uprightness yeah. um, and main and not not fall down and uh, we know that there are many chiropractors these days uh, are falling because they don't they don't get back to those principles. So getting back to the principles helps us to maintain our stability or maintain our our uprightness or maintain our balance uh, as far as uh, chiropractic is concerned right. and prevents us from 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 falling flat on, flat on our faces, which is what uh, that we've done. And I think that uh, many times we chiropractors tend to fall on our faces because we don't have the the principles that we go back to and stabilize ourselves with, uh, or mm -hmm. maintain our balance with. Right. So that's that's uh, where that the derivation of that that term uh, uh, stumbling or slipping, yeah. uh, as as BJ uh, used the term. In, well, I think it's important just to talk about that because I know I do. I can speak for myself. There's times in the office where I stumble a bit because in my language I'll slip into something and and use the wrong word or maybe I think, ah, oh, man, I, I didn't phrase that properly and they might get the wrong impression of what chiropractic is. But by having this resource, things like this and getting into the philosophy as much as possible, I'm able to correct that and get back on track right away. So I think for the chiropractor right. listening is to realize, hey, it's okay. We're all going to trip up every now and then and maybe use a wrong phrase. I think part of it is because we're also in the world and we're so indoctrinated with all these outside in philosophy that it accidentally comes out sometimes we have to be able to catch that though and make sure we don't keep going down that path yeah i, I think that's why it's it's important that we uh reflect upon our our unique philosophy and uh, which is demonstrated by the the 33 principles uh that we go back into that and and kind of ha we have to kind of remind ourselves we have to pull back on the reins by saying well am i am i talking chiropractic or am I talking medical am I getting into yeah. uh, medical concepts uh, and and that's that, that's the first step in, in in slipping is is when we begin to uh, talk about chiropractic in the terms that are uniquely medical in in, uh, in mm -hmm. nature and something that we shouldn't do and I so, so I think that's that's uh, what's important for us to maintain the stability or the balance of our chiropractic philosophy and not get into other other uh, 
areas of expertise. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with those other areas of expertise, right. expertise as long as they are being used in the, uh, in the, in the proper context. Yeah. And of course, uh, we maintain uh, the proper context is, is the practice of medicine, uh, which should be done by medical doctors or those done in the, uh, in the therapeutic uh, model. And that's why we don't, uh, we are non-therapeutic. And that, in that sense, we are non-therapeutic. And so, so often I, um, in my, in my practice, uh, you know, when usually it would have, it usually occurred when a per after a person left the office, I would say, now, why did I, say, why did I say that? Or, yeah. or I, I was getting to the, into the wrong area. Uh, un a little unique uh, thing I had in my practice, uh, was, um, I had a, a, a tuning fork and, uh, people once in a while would ask me, what that tuning fork is for and of course in in, in the medical area the tuning fork was you know, free for to to make a diagnosis to see if the person has some kind of a, a hearing problem yeah. and uh, but i use the tuning fork because uh the the adjusting tables that i had were really tight and 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 stiff and uh in order to get the the head change the roll on the headrest paper i had to kind of pry the <laughs> the, uh, the, the the thing off, and so I had this tuning fork in the one room where the where the oh, table funny. was really tight that, that I used to uh, to pry the the uh, the headrest paper off, and uh, and so I could change the roll when when that roll ran out, and uh, we went through uh, we went through a lot of uh, practice members in the office, and so I had to change that roll quite often, and rather than uh, go out of the room. And get it. I just left it in in the room, sitting on the ledge there. And yeah. So I would have to uh, put that that uh, tuning fork in there, the end of the tuning fork in there, and pry that roll up to, in order to change and change it to the next roll uh, where I could get a fresh uh, a fresh roll of paper. And uh, I had to tell people that's what that's what that that's what that tuning fork is for. And so if someone would ask me why I use a tuning fork. Uh, that's that's why I I used it. It wasn't and, for uh, medical purposes. It was for mechanical purposes. Yes, right, <laughs> exactly. And uh, and 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 so uh, th I I explained that to people and and let them know that uh, I didn't I never I never checked a person's hearing yeah, uh, right. in the office with a tuning fork. Uh, I I just use it to to pry the the roll of paper. Well, awesome. I think there's like, there's maybe two levels of this where a chiropractor um, can slip up. You know, for me in my office, I don't do anything but adjust people. And so for me, the slip comes with the language or the communication. I'll say something to a person. And like you just said, now after the leave, I'll think, ah, boy, I didn't word that properly. I didn't, you know, that didn't come out the way I wanted it to. And so there's that level and there's the level of a chiropractor who is doing a lot of medical stuff and they're, they've maybe stumbled and fallen. And so I guess to the question I have for you then is for the chiropractor who would be in the situation where it's, it's just a matter of, Hey, we slip up every now and then on our language. The challenge I think comes from that is that we are engaging with people who most of them don't have, uh, an above down inside out philosophy they have a very mechanistic medical philosophy so the conversations that they bring up are all from that or the questions they might have all come from that medical perspective so how do you when you're approached with those types of questions where just a person comes in and says you know my my headaches still haven't gone away and that's a medical question and they're trying to we have to be careful not to get pulled down that path so what's your advice how do you what do you do to, to start to turn that conversation around so you don't get dragged down that medical path and are now trying to explain chiropractic from a medical perspective? Um, yeah, my uh, my friend Dick Plummer. I don't know whether you you, know, you knew Dick. He's mm -hmm. passed on at this point. Uh, but the, Dick said, you know, the most common term for a chiropractor uh, to use in his office is uh, the most common phrase is, I don't know. And, yeah. and I think that's, that's what 
that's what we so often have to say when people ask us a question is I don't know. And uh, most questions that can be answered, I don't know. It means uh, we don't know, but you know, we only know what we know and, and what the body does with, with everything else. So when a person says, so, uh, you know, why are my headaches getting, uh, getting better? Uh, that question you just ask is, uh, I don't know, you know, your body knows what, what, what does the, you know, what is the reason we really don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know what the body knows and we don't know what is normal for an individual. And I think that's when where we, we get into the, uh, into the, uh, the principle of, of, uh, of limitations of time and limitations of matter. Uh, so we have to honestly say to the person, I don't know. And yep. then of course, uh, we need to explain to them why we, uh, we don't know. Uh, because it's just it's just not part of our objective, or it's not something that that anybody that anybody can know. What well, uh, I was going to say, the truth is body. that it's the truth of it is it's really not knowable by anybody. What the right. exact cause or reason that your headaches aren't getting better or they're getting worse, whatever the case might be, we don't really know. So I love that, and I'll let you finish there. But just wanted to add this little point. That's one of the things I love about chiropractic and our philosophy is we're just telling people the truth. The truth is we really don't know, but here's what we do know. We do know you're always better off without subluxations and with them. You're always better off with a full expression of life in your body. So let's make sure you have that, but I don't really know. That's why mm -hmm. we get to be honest with people and not give them a line of BS and try to make things up. And so. Yeah, I think, that, uh, I think that chiropractors tend to be uh, concerned about appearing appearing ignorant by, and that's what the term I don't know kind of gives some people the impression because the medical doctor says, well, I do know this mm -hmm. is what the average is, or this is what, and he, he used probably the term normal uh, yeah. mistakenly uh, to, to, to tell the person and to impress upon the people that he does know. And, and I think chiropractors oftentimes are concerned about uh, giving that, uh, impression that uh, yep. they they want people they want people to think they they have uh, a little more intelligence than than they really do or uh and that's a natural much intelligence nobody as, wants as the medical profession and and uh to say we don't uh, say i don't know uh yep. kind of impresses upon people ignorance when when you know the average person knows quote i use the term in quotes the average person knows that the uh uh, the the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, and uh, so when if a chiropractor has the does does takes a person's blood pressure, he can say your your blood pressure is okay because it's 120 over 80, and uh, I, I, I think there's a commercial appears on television right now where a person says you know I had blood pressure of 120 over 80 and I had a stroke, <laughs> and so. So we really don't know whether 120 over 80 is normal for for an individual, right. Right. or whether it's not. And knowing that it's not normal to uh, to have a stroke, then uh, then uh, obviously 120 over 80 for an individual who has a stroke is not normal for them. And yeah. uh, I, I think that the chiropractors run the risk of trying to impress upon their uh, the the uh, practice member mm -hmm. uh, who comes in the office where, with, their, with their knowledge. And unfortunately, uh, so often uh, to impress upon person with that knowledge, we have to get into the medical field or get into medical uh, determinations yeah. uh, when uh, we really don't know from a chiropractic standpoint, we don't know what's normal uh, for right. an individual. Uh, and, and I think uh, when you think about that, that's a natural emotion or state for everybody we don't want it no one wants to look stupid or appear to be ignorant about something but i think it's all a symptom of, of a bigger problem whereas we can say i don't know but then we follow it up with what we do know and so we can come from a place of hey that's not what i do that's not my expertise i don't know that stuff but what i do know is this and that problem that chiropractors have with, with the inability to follow up the i don't know with what they do know is because they haven't 
read or studied the philosophy. They don't know how to explain anything beyond that. So they get stuck there. So because they don't have the follow-up, they don't even start with I don't know. Right? They, they start with the, the medical whatever explanation they might have learned in school. But if they knew how to follow up that I don't know, they'd be more confident starting that conversation by saying that or starting the answer by saying that. So again, I think the problem is we got to get back to what the real issue is, and that's a lack of understanding and an ability to communicate the philosophy of chiropractic to people. Yeah, I think that, I think that we need to really look at any question that a, that a person asks us in the office uh, and say, well, why, why is it that, that, that they're asking that question? We say in our own mind, why is it that they're asking that question? And, uh, and I know chiropractors have said, well, uh, straight chiropractors who said, well, you know, if, if a per whatever person, whatever question a person's asking, it's because they don't have an understanding of some concept of, of the chiropractic philosophy, whether that concept is, is the, the, the basic uh, idea that they don't understand what our objective is, or they un don't understand why no one can really know uh, what is normal for an individual uh, mm -hmm. and that only the body makes that determination as to what is normal all we can do is make sure that the body is expressing uh, the in inborn intelligence that it has uh, at, to the fullest possible extent that it, it, that it can by removing an interference in the nervous system so uh, we, we, we need to understand why people are asking the questions that they're asking, and and uh, I think that we can uh, we can explain that by uh, the concept of uh, the thirty three principles. Mm -hmm. uh, whether a person doesn't understand the idea of limitations of time, which is what we're, I guess we're on, on limitations of time. We're just past that, uh, yeah. or they or they don't have the amount of intelligence in matter that's where we are today if yeah. they don't have an understanding that uh, that even though they have uh 100 intelligence by virtue of the fact that they're alive uh they may not be expressing 100 percent of that intelligence due to an interference in their nervous system and that's where we begin and end in our in our approach to the practice of of chiropractic with making sure that an individual has 100% of that expression of that intelligence or as close to the 100% that they, they can have uh, understanding the concept of limitations of time and limitations of matter. You know, maybe an individual has not uh, gotten, uh, gotten understanding of that concept of of limitations of time and uh, that it's going to take time for their body to heal itself and we really don't know how much that what that time frame is right. and uh, and we really can't know that and and we can't make a judgment say to, to say to the person well you know you just have to you have to be patient because uh, it's going to take a little more time for your body to heal itself and we really don't know that uh, that individual may be beyond the uh, the, the point of time, right. or they may be uh, beyond the, the 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 limitations of the matter of their body. And uh, for us to make a judgment and say, well, you know, just be patient that the body's going to get get itself yeah. better. And that's an easy one to case. fall back on. That's, make, that's making a judgment on our on our. Right. Or a, a medical judgment, really, when we right. when we say that. Uh, but we we need to, I think we need to get the person to understand why we can't make that judgment. And if they want to have that judgment made, they have to they have to have that done some somewhere else. That's mm -hmm. not done in in yeah. a chiropractic office as we practice chiropractic. And uh, they need to go somewhere else to have that uh, that judgment made. If they if they want somebody to make that uh, that uh, that guess, if you will, mm -hmm. right. and uh, some people are uh, are better at making that guess uh, than we are. 
and sure. that's that's not what we do in our office and so i think that's 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 where uh we need to get people back to understanding that's uh that's really checking our slipping and yeah. if because the slipping would be uh, or the stumbling if you will would be when we try to make that determination for people mm -hmm. when that's not in our area of expertise right. to make that right. determination if it, if it is in the area of, of anybody's uh, expertise it's surely not it's surely not ours as a chiropractor and uh, there's something that we can do and that's make sure that there's a, a full complement or as full as a complement as possible in that individual of innate forces being expressed through the body uh, as we as we humanly poss possibly can by yeah. correcting vertebral subluxations in yeah. in their body and uh, and that's that's all we do and um uh, i think that we can convince people or that we can convince most people uh that that's a worthwhile uh service to perform the mm -hmm. human race and it's a it's a it's a service that that everybody in the human race right. needs to have performed on them whether at any moment they may they, they may need someone else's expertise or they may need uh so, uh they need to make a decision as to whether they want to have something more done to their body than than uh, a freedom of expression of the innate intelligence of their body that's an that's a worthwhile and a necessary function um, mm -hmm. for people to uh or service for people to have uh expressed in themselves uh and anything else is just not our yeah it's just not our uh function or not our objective as mm -hmm. a chiropractor uh whether someone needs that needs that other service performed um or whether it's just something they may have to learn to live with uh, or may have to uh, learn to die with uh <laughs> that's not something that we that's that's not a service that right. we can perform right people you know i think the thing in your your office was evidence of this and our office is also a evidence of this is that people do want to hear this stuff they want to hear it and when they do hear it it's a very attractive thing because it, it makes sense it's logical it maybe gives them answers to things that they've thought about or maybe it puts what they kind of already knew innately into perspective and line and they and they like it so i think for the chiropractors out there who are looking maybe have a more objective straight chiropractic office but are afraid for whatever reason it might be is to know that people actually love hearing this stuff it's something that they i don't know if they're actively seeking it out but what they they they're attracted to it once they hear it because again it is logical and it makes sense and and you are evidence of this in a big way in your office yeah i think that's i think that's really a common sense thing mm -hmm. and uh, but people do need to to hear that and need to hear that that's not that's not our objective and that's not what we do in our office and and i think that people need to to understand that that if they want that that service performed or they want that knowledge uh they need to go somewhere else to get it and because that's just it's just not what we do right in our office it's not part of the practice of chiropractic it may be necessary and mm -hmm. it may be it might be might be vital to them and uh an individual who may pass that point of limitations of time or limitations of matter and uh, they 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 need they may they may personally want to have that knowledge Mm -hmm. or that service uh performed if it's if it's a limitation of matter uh but that's not it's not what we do in our office and if they want that done and i fully can appreciate that people may want to have that information <clears throat> or that uh service performed on them the, the treatment of a of a condition or a symptom but that's that's just not what we do right and, and we do recognize that there is an area of expertise 
that that addresses that that problem or that limitation, and uh, that's that's not what we do in our office. And if they and if they uh, want, want to know that uh, or want that service uh, performed, they need to go mm -hmm. somewhere else. But I I think that that it behooves us to explain to people that they still need that service performed, which will make sure that they have a full a comp full complement of innate forces traveling right. through their body or being expressed through their body. And they're not gonna get that done somewhere else. Right. They may need uh, a treatment for their headache or mm -hmm. they may, may, may need something that's going to be done to uh, treat the symptoms of their headache, but that's not, that's not what we perform. If they need that, if they want that, uh, then they need to go to someone who, who will therapeutically right. treat their symptoms. But they still need to have a full complement of innate forces yeah. being expressed through their body, and that's what we do. And yeah. so I think that uh, that chiropractors need to explain to people that, and explain to people uh, that's where our service begins and ends mm -hmm. with, with the correction of the vertebral subluxation in that individual. And that's why I think chiropractors uh, do a disservice to people by saying, well, you know, you just need to give it time uh, because, uh, you know, your body will heal itself. If a person's body is going to heal itself, then uh, they, they need to have that interference removed right. or their interference uh corrected if it's at, at the vertebral level right. but that's not something we know and i think that we do a disservice by uh, uh indicating to people or implying in in our service that what we do will su suffice in that way now we know that the many times there are uh situations in which a person will have their spine adjusted and uh, their symptoms will go away or uh, their problem will go away and uh, in, in a relatively short period of time or <laughs> immediately. And I've had people in my office uh, who've, uh, you know, gotten better uh, overnight uh, from, a, from a symptom. And, uh, sometimes after after getting a chiropractic adjustment i think it's kind of ironic that uh, that uh, chiropractors are are taking care of mostly people with musculoskeletal conditions because uh those seem to be the problems uh or the symptoms that people come into a chiropractor's office with and and seem to have the the uh, the most rapid uh, quote results and, yeah. and so when, when a person comes into the office, uh, probably most chiropractors today are taking care of people mostly with, with musculoskeletal problems because that's, that's what uh, they seem to have, have the uh, most results, quote, <laughs> results with, and, which, is, which is unfortunate and uh, because uh, that's not what chiropractic is all about. And when people under, understand chiropractic in that light, they tend to go to a chiropractor mm -hmm. and, and say, well, you know, my, my, my back got better under, under chiropractic care. And that's why chiropractors get, get uh, that uh, mistaken right. impression that chiropractors take care of musculoskeletal conditions. Yeah. And that's why most people are, uh, are uh, taking care of people with, with those kind of conditions because they seem to get the best results. Uh, well, and I had, um, you know who Eddie Cohen was, chiropractor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learned from him a long time ago. He gave me a great analogy and he said how, um, when he would do his consultation, because I think the, there's a couple of reasons why people make that assumption. People in the public make the assumption that chiropractors are back doctors, neck back doctors, um, because that's what we've taught them, of course, as a profession. But number two, because we as chiropractors work 
on the neck and the back. So they make the assumption that you must be neck and back doctors because eye doctors work on the eye, foot doctors on the, on the foot and, and so on and so on. So that starts the education process of letting them know why are we working on the back? We're working on the back because that's our way of allowing your body's innate intelligence to better express itself, not to treat the neck or back pain that you may or may not have. So it's a, you know, it's a good way to start that process of getting people to understand what we do. Why are we working on the back? You know, because mm -hmm. of, that's where we correct vertebral subluxations and allow your body's innate intelligence to better express itself. Not because you have a back pain or a neck pain. Yeah, and uh, the back and the neck pain, of course, uh, we instead of explaining to them that the, that the nerves uh, coordinate the function of every aspect of the human body and they just ha happen to pass through the neck and the brain. Uh, right. I, I used to, you know, tell people, well, if, if, if all the nerves were affected by uh, uh, pass through the knee, then I guess I would be yeah. adjusting knees, but yes. I don't adjust knees because <laughs> I know that, that all the nerves mm -hmm. aren't affected by uh, nerves that pass through the knees. Uh, yeah. that, only, that only, refer, only affects those nerves that uh, go to other parts of the body. And uh, we, don't, we don't adjust knees uh, because that's not where vertebral subluxation occur. And uh, vertebral subluxations interfere with the function of the nerve system, period. And, uh, and we need to uh, address what we do as chiropractors in uh, affecting the nerve system that affects the function of the entire body. And I think that, that uh, you know, that's a real danger to us to, to uh, do that. And of course, we, we get to the point where, you know, the chiropractor will advertise and uh, have one of those uh, arrows that's, uh, that's pointing to some part of their body. And, yeah. uh, and most of the time, it's either the neck or the back or some part of the body. Right. And that right. gives people the impression that, that we take care of back problems or neck problems right. or, or something like that. And, uh, and that's the danger that, that we do. And I guess chiropractors do that because uh, they seem to get the, the, the most uh, positive uh, results from people who mm -hmm. have those conditions. But it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, uh, a circular situation in which uh, chiropractors advertise back and neck problems. And uh, as a result, that's what they tend to attract in their office. So much so that the majority of people who go into a chiropractor's office are going there for uh, some back, neck, or uh, musculoskeletal problem. And uh, I think that uh, if a person would come in my office and say, well, you know, I oftentimes ask them why they come in the office, and they would say, well, I, I want to make sure that every every part of my body is expressing its full potential. Um, they probably would have to pick me up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if, if people say, well, it's because I have a back problem, uh, then I, I know that I have to do a little bit more in the explanation of them. Of them. But uh, that would be the more common uh, yeah. response that I would get from so nobody ever came in your office and said that what <laughs> that they wanted to have every part of their body at its full potential usually it was usually it was uh, practice members who who yeah did not have the uh, the ability to to communicate uh, <laughs> and which meant that they were like uh, two years old or less <laughs> and then they were being brought in by their parents who there you understood go. Well, I thought, you had, I thought you had a person or two who maybe didn't phrase it exactly like that, but came because their husband or wife or somebody told them to do that. So yeah, don't sell yourself too short on that. I'm sure it happened to a, maybe a different way, but. Yeah, I, I, I think there's, there's been some in, that have come in the office, but usually it's because someone explained properly to them. Yeah. what we chiropractors do and what what our oh yeah, yeah is and uh but but uh they're they're far outnumbered by the people who come in 
with a particular problem that right. uh, seems to relate directly to their to their spine or nervous system. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, that was that was a. Well, that was great. You know, I want to add one more thing there. You had a lot of great points there you made, and I just want to add one thought that I was came to mind. I think for me again that 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 the principal time is probably the one. I personally have the most problem with slipping and checking if I think of it. It's so easy to fall into that trap as a chiropractor to say, wow, you just need more time. Then that's, those are the ones that they leave. And I'm like, oh, I didn't, how did I say that? Or, you know, and so, but again, the, the whole point is you have to be aware that you slipped before you can check yourself. If you don't realize that that's not something you should be saying, you're, there's no checking that comes along with it. So again, that's why this stuff that we're going over is so valuable because if you don't know you've slipped you can't check yourself and we have to have that awareness of what we're saying and be cognizant of the words coming out of our mouth so we can self-reflect maybe and go oh yeah that wasn't the right thing to say i gotta do better next time or next time i see that person maybe i'll explain it to him again in a better way so we have to know when we've slipped and that's what this stuff is all about and um and, and really getting into this so we can do a better job. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I think that uh, we have to understand ourselves what that slipping is and understand uh, what that slipping is in, in, the, in the, uh, the, the concepts or the questions that a, a person in the office may ask us or a person on the street uh, mm -hmm. may, may ask us. Uh, I have, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Bill Deccan, he um, he would he once said he was at a some kind of a, a, a gathering and he was sitting at a table with a group of people and someone said to him, um, you know what what do you do? And he said, well, I make I make sure that the the integrity of the nervous system is such that all the impulses coming from the brain yeah. are reaching all parts of, of the body and uh, and, I, and the person said to him oh you're a chiropractor and uh, and he said after they picked me up off the floor <laughs> yeah and then, then I, uh, I I talked to people some more but he said that that was that was a that was a, a, a person who probably had been to a chiropractor before and had uh, understood what right what, chiro what his objective as a chiropractor was mm -hmm. and, uh, but like i said those, those are few and far between and uh, right. if, if that if everybody knew that uh, we wouldn't probably be uh taking care of bad backs and stiff necks uh like we are and yeah. uh he's he's he, he apparently ran into a person that's awesome who, who, uh, who knew what his objective his objective was well, I think that's a great <clears throat> lesson there. And anyway, and I, I've talked about that with other chiropractors, how when someone asks you what you do, you, we should really just lead with our objective versus saying I'm a chiropractor. Because if we say that, they automatically assume you're a back and neck doctor 99% of the time, unless there's someone like what, what Dr. Decker met there. But if we tell them like he did there, what our objective is, now we've controlled the conversation. And, and, and if they don't know that if that's what a chiropractor does, then we can tell them, well, oh, I'm a chiropractor. And now the whole conversation goes in a whole different direction than it would have otherwise if you had just said, I'm a chiropractor. Not that we're not proud of being a chiropractor, but if we really want to change people's minds, we can do a better job of doing just that and leading with our objective and getting people yeah. to go home. I, I think what we need to understand is that uh, that there's – no right answer to to a wrong wrong question or yeah. a wrong comment yeah. and uh when people say well you're you're a back doctor right uh and well i'm not i'm not i'm only a back doctor because that's where the spine uh is located in the back mm -hmm. and uh so and, and people need to understand uh what our objective is and how we do how we explain that objective whether we explain well that's what our objective is not is is one approach or we explain what our objective is 
that's that's a, another approach which may be uh, you know valuable to to people and something that people should know um, but sometimes we uh, become lazy or uh, yeah. or uh, we slip that way yeah. by saying well yeah I take care that I take care of the, the people with, with that problem and there there we've we've gone down the wrong road when yeah. we uh, when we in any way give people a mistaken impression what we do it's like the old uh, you know, question well when did when did you stop when did you stop beating, beating your wife? wife yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right well <laughs> I think we did a good job of talking about slipping and checking today. <laughs> and, uh, well, that, right. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because it is important and that just emphasizes why we're doing this. It's to help the chiropractor who maybe does have a, a good understanding of philosophy, the importance of you know getting back into the stuff so that when you do slip, you can check yourself. And then for the chiropractor who doesn't know anything about chiropractic philosophy that they have to realize you can't again like i said before you can't check yourself if you don't know you slipped in the first place and so i think this is a very valuable lesson today for people you know it was for me and for other chiropractors to hear this stuff so i think this was this was incredible yeah but I, if i if i if we, if we keep going like this uh we may be a couple of years right. finished there's 30 no principles if i get hung up on each one like this but uh, <laughs> but uh I think I think this is good for me because it it uh, causes me to uh, to to think about what I need to say to people and and yeah. of course if that's what I need to say to people then that's what chiropractors need to understand mm -hmm. and and this vehicle that you have uh, created here enables people to get that understanding for themselves so they can communicate it to the people who come into their office or the people that they that they meet and that's yeah. probably the only way we're going to uh, grow this profession as far as numbers uh, or at least make the, uh, the, the public and, uh, and the people we come in contact with aware of what our, our profession does and what our objective yeah. is. And, uh, and, and that's an important thing that, that we have to do uh, yeah. as, as chiropractors. And uh, and there's not enough people out there doing that. And uh, I appreciate again the opportunity to, oh, to share this course. with people. You know, it's it's so great. You know, as you were speaking earlier, it made me think of um, being a master or being a jack of all trades versus a master of none, and how the the chiropractors who have a person who has slipped and and they they don't know that they've slipped. Oftentimes, it's because they're maybe trying to be all things to all people. They're trying to be a jack of all trades. They're trying to give the answer, the medical answer to the, the headache question. So the better handle that, they have physical therapy in their office. They have this and that in their office. There are all these medical procedures in their office to address these symptoms. And I, I just, again, not if they want to do that, fine. Not what I would do in my office. But my point is, when you really make an effort to try to master something people see that people know that and they again they want that and your office was evidence of that and that you were not trying to be all things to all people you were trying to be the best chiropractor possible and in, an effort, in, in order to do that you had to know the philosophy and you had to be able to communicate it in a way that was relatable to people that they could understand and grasp and that's a lot of fun and i think there's maybe my point is that's hope for chiropractors who feel that it's just too hard to do or that people won't want that but to know that people love that people want to be around someone who is a master of something there's a lot of people in the world <clears throat> in all professions who are just kind of dabbling in stuff and and that's just eh, who really cares but when you come across somebody in any profession but here we're talking about chiropractic who's really a master at something People know that and they respect that and they're like, all right, I, I want to be a part of this. And you're a great example of that for all of us to follow. So, so thank you. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to share it with people at this uh, particular point in my, in my life. And, 
and I and I think there's there's a lot of chiropractors out there who will want that. You know, I'm not sure that we'll ever reach uh, the point where we will uh, take over the entire chiropractic profession uh, mm -hmm. with that model of chiropractic. Uh, but there surely are a lot of people, or enough people out there, who who would like that and say, well, that you know that makes sense, and whatever else I need. Uh, or, or may in the future need, uh, that's something that I need right now. And mm -hmm. I, that I do need to, to take care of and to address throughout my lifetime. And, uh, and I really know that there's no, no one else, no other profession out there that provides that service for people other than a chiropractor who will correct subluxations, uh, yep. in, in my, in my body. And I think there's enough enough people, like I say, who who would uh, choose that, and and want, would want that service mm -hmm. performed for them, and uh, that we can we can do that, uh, that we can yep. make a good living, and uh, and provide a needed service that they can't get anywhere else. And that's I right. think that's important to for people to understand that uh, that the service that we provide is something they need and something that no one else seems to be doing uh, at least not purposely doing right. uh, there may be uh, chiropractors who are uh, putting machines on people who are inadvertently correcting vertebral subluxations but that's not that's not their objective <clears throat> and that's just a, a side effect of of the <laughs> chiropractic uh, uh, of, of their chiropractic care and it's not and it's not the the intent of their chiropractic care Right. And, and I think that we need to make sure that people know our intention, uh, our objective, and that we are the only ones who can perform that service on a consistent basis as long as we're in, in, the, uh, in the business of checking people's spine and correcting subluxations. Yep. Well, thank you as always, Joe. You're the best. I think that's, that's, that's a good lesson for today. And, there you go. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a lesson that uh, we need to hear and probably one that we need to remind ourselves of every day uh, yeah. when we walk in the office and uh, that, uh, that's, that we are correcting vertebral subluxations and we're provide, providing that necessary, valuable, and unique service to, mm -hmm. to the, uh, yeah. the members of our community. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks.